What is Unconditional Self-Acceptance and How to Develop It with REBT? Unconditional self-acceptance is an important concept popularized by the famous Dr. Albert Ellis, the creator of Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, REBT, and the Albert Ellis Institute located in New York City. Unconditional self-acceptance is to be distinguished from self-esteem in that while self-esteem is often about evaluating yourself higher than you may tend to do by focusing on the things that you do well rather than the things at which you don't do so well, whereas unconditional self-acceptance is simply about fully accepting yourself regardless of how well you perform. In REBT unconditional self-acceptance does not indicate that all your traits, behaviors, and intentions are good, moral, ethical, or effective in attaining a desired life goal. In fact, each of us might have traits we very much would like to change and that by changing them our life might improve. However, research has found that if we unconditionally accept ourselves even in the presence of bad behavior and failures, we spend less time focusing on our failure and more time in changing those behaviors and results for the better. What are some techniques in REBT that can be used to develop unconditional self-acceptance? 1. Cognitive restructuring. Cognitive restructuring involves identifying irrational or unhelpful beliefs about the self, disputing them to prove to ourselves how unhelpful they really are, and then replacing them with more helpful and adaptive beliefs. Some examples are as follows. A. One unhelpful belief that sabotages reaching unconditional self-acceptance that is an example of demandingness is, I must be successful at things that are important to me. A more adaptive, helpful belief would be, I hope that I succeed at things that are important to me, but there is no rule or standard that I must succeed. B. Another unhelpful belief that impedes developing unconditional self-acceptance that is an example of awfulizing is, it would be awful if I failed at something that is important to me. A more adaptive, helpful belief would be, I wouldn't like it if I failed at something that is important to me, but it wouldn't be totally awful. C. Still another unhelpful belief that impedes developing unconditional self-acceptance that is an example of frustration intolerance is, I can't stand failing at something that is important to me. A more adaptive, helpful belief would be, while I wouldn't like failing at something that is important to me, I could certainly stand it. D. Another unhelpful that gets in the way of developing unconditional self-acceptance that is an example of global negative self-rating is, when I fail at something important to me, I am a loser. 2. Acting as if you unconditionally accepted yourself. One of the ways that was originally developed by William James and was adapted by Albert Ellis for REBT was to focus on changing behavior rather than change one's beliefs about the self. This would entail identifying how one would act in a particular situation if one unconditionally accepted oneself. The individual would regularly practice acting in such a way and thereby develop unconditional self-acceptance. 3. Rational Emotive Imagery In rational emotive imagery there are two parts. One part is to have a client identify a situation in which the client did not unconditionally accept oneself about something they did or didn't do. As they visualize that situation, they are to try to get in touch with how it feels not to have unconditional self-acceptance. Once one gets in touch with that feeling, the individual stops the visualization and calms down. Once calm, the individual is to visualize the same situation, but this time try to get in touch with how it feels if one unconditionally accepted the self. The client is to do this exercise daily in the hope that it may help develop unconditional self-acceptance. 4. Differentiating the self from the roles of the self, this intervention developed by the late Dr. James McMahon and Dr. Steve A. Johnson is quite simple and involves taking a piece of paper and upon it drawing a circle and at the top of the circle, entitle the circle as, the self. On the same piece of paper to the side of the circle, one draws a series of lines one on top of the other, all pointing to the circle. The heading of the series of lines is, Roles of the Self. On each line, the client is to write down one of the client's roles, such as parent, spouse, student, employee, etc. Then each day, the client is to evaluate the client's performance in that role. 
For example, the client might have done quite well as a parent, but did very poorly on an exam in their role as a student, made one minor mistake as a spouse, etc. The goal is to have the client learn how to rate their behavior within a role without rating the self. In other words, the client learns to differentiate performance in a role rather than globally and irrationally evaluating the value of the self. Albert Ellis frequently said that in doing such interventions it is important to do it regularly with energy and focus. Change does not generally come about by thinking about changing or insight into oneself, but by working at it so that the new behavior or more adaptive emotion becomes habitual. All the best and have a great day.